Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to homeschool in the state of Virginia and we're going to begin at the HSLDA website which you can join and become a member if you have any legal concerns because they could help you with those sort of things. I am not an attorney so I can't help you with those sort of things but I can go to their website and see what it says and you can check and see if there's any updates since I created this video or changes. And right now it says that you have to ensure you have one of the four home instructor qualifications. And one of those says that you possess a high school diploma or higher degree. Another one is that you have a teacher's license. Another one just says that you're going to provide your child with a curriculum or program of study as part of your home instruction or give evidence that you're able to provide your child an ad adequate education. It says that you have to file a notice yearly with your school district superintendent that you intend to homeschool your child and indicate your home instructor qualification. With the notice, you need to provide a curriculum description, which is just a list of subjects for each child. This needs to be done every year by August 15th. If you are moving into the school district or beginning to provide home instruction, after the school year has begun, you need to submit this notice as soon as practicable. It says you need to provide an annual evaluation and it describes what that needs to be. It could be a standardized achievement test um, with a score, and it shows that how it, how it needs to be in the, at least the 23rd percentile. An evaluation letter from a person licensed to teach in any state, or a person with a master's degree or higher in academic discipline who knows about the child's academic progress, stating the child is achieving an adequate level of education growth and progress. Um, a report card or transcript from a community college or college distant learning program or home education correspondent school or another type of evaluation or assessment. So you could read this and you can become a member and ask them more questions about that if you have it or contact your local school board of education. And then it talks about homeschooling with a religious exemption. And I'm not going to read all of this. But I will scroll down if you want to pause it and read it. You can. And you can go to their website and you can see what it says. And so there is that because that's a lot of reading and I want to go over a lot of things. This is with a certified tutor that you could use. And this is with a private school option. So they have a few options there for you. And this is the Virginia Department of Education website. And you can go to their website and you can see what it says. And you're probably going to want to keep a portfolio or a binder, which some people do. It's, it's, it's a great way to keep your records, but it's also an excellent keepsake for you and your student. And you might want to have your student create one as um, maybe a project, a school project. And so this covers some information as well. And you might want to print this out and put the date that you were on the internet and found this and printed it out. And so you can put it into your portfolio or binder. So it talks, it has different resources and links to help you. It even has a home instruction handbook for parents, driver's education information. It just has a, a variety of resources. So you might want to go to that website and check out those resources as well. And then there are different links on the left hand side for you. Um, at the beginning of the school year, you're probably going to want to give your student an assessment. This isn't a standardized test. This is just to see what level they're on. So you can come up with a plan of what you're going to teach them for the year. And you can use that and put that in your portfolio or your binder as well. You can save these in PDF format. And there's other ones online that you can find as well. And this is one of them from that website. So you can print it out and have your students take it and you can see if there's places that they just made simple mistakes or maybe they need to review something or if that's what level they're on to help you create a plan 
for their education and you might want to put that in your portfolio or your binder. This is another website that I love. It's if you're trying to brainstorm and come up with a list of resources that you're going to need to homeschool your student, your favorite websites, your favorite books or workbooks that you have um, so that you can create a list and then maybe you're going to want to create another list of the resources that you're going to actually use and that way you can look back on your brainstorm list of your favorites and maybe halfway through the year next year you're going to want to use different ones and also from this this might help you to be able to create a schedule for your students you know maybe you want to teach you know 60 65 percent of you know the main core subjects like math and English and reading and history but then maybe you want to have a free period for them so that they can choose what they want to learn about or maybe Wednesdays after lunch you're going to have like economics or 4-H type classes where they could learn about cooking uh, for a month on the after Wednesdays after lunch or we learned how to use a sewing machine in school when I was younger and made stuffed animals and we learned leather crafts in school as well so you know you might be ha there might be different subject areas you want to cover and maybe you want so that your child has a more creative and fun education maybe friday after lunch you want to spend their education time playing board games like um this one lists chess and Legos, but maybe you want to use categories, Yahtzee, Scrabble, and games like that for their math and English, or maybe you have magazine subscriptions that are history and science that you want to use Friday after lunch. So it's still in their subject area, but it's just something fun and different for them so that they have a funner way of learning and what maybe you might consider to be a better learning experience depending on who you are so this might help you with that list this is a homeschool attendance record and you can see where i found it and you can go online and find this and print it out you might want to have two of them one for the days that you plan on having school field trips and holidays and another one for the days you actually have school and holidays and field trips you know even if you go to public school sometimes they have snow days so this will help you and you can put this in your binder and these are free online and this is IXL and what I love about this if let's say you're creating your daily log of activities to put in your portfolio or your binder where you put like day one day two day three that's the way I would do it and then you put next to day one you put the date you put the time you put the name of the subject and then you put the name of the website or the book that you're utilizing for your students and then you want to put the activity and this shows the activity like even or odd skip counting writing numbers in words so that you can see what that is and you can print this curriculum out to put in your binder or you can write it down on a piece of notebook paper and put it in your portfolio or your binder or you can type it up and email it to yourself you can copy it and paste it and space it together the way you want and have that to show your curriculum and that you can have that in your portfolio or binder this is Khan Academy and it's supposed to be free for everyone and it's pre-k all the way up to college and it has life skill classes so maybe you're going to use IXL for math and Khan Academy for life skills and another curriculum site for English it's just up to you how you want to do your education experience and this one is all-in-one homeschool and it is free at this time they take you to a website to see if you want to donate and then maybe you want don't want to donate but then maybe you want to use it and find out you love it and then donate and it has Bible classes so if you want to begin your day with a Bible lesson you can or you can just go through their daily activities which I don't think includes the Bible classes because it's separate I think that you have to click on and they use different websites maybe one for English and one for math and one for history and it's just great fun so you can decide which ones you like and check them out this is Schoolhouse Rock and maybe you've heard of it but maybe you didn't realize that it covered grammar science economics history mathematics and civics it covers a variety of subjects 
And the kids will sing the songs and they'll learn them and they'll memorize them. So maybe they'll remember them unto their adulthood. And it has uh, multiplication tables. And then you can see it teaches the parts of speech. And if they learn this while they're young, they'll still need to know this in all throughout elementary school and middle school and high school and college. So these are important things for them to learn. And this is America Rock. So you can see that it teaches them about the United States Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and different things that they might need to know. And this is Science Rock. And they have Earth Rock, which is science as well. And you can see what they learn from that. This is Money Rock, which teaches them about bartering and stock exchange and family bills and expenses. And here's Earth Rock, and you can see the subjects. And it's just so much fun. Maybe you want to make lunch and you need a break, and this is an excellent way to take a break. Maybe they've been writing in a workbook or doing things and they want a break, but you still want them to be learning and enjoying their learning. This is just a great resource, I think. And this is International Children's Digital Library, and it has like 5,000 books or thereabouts, maybe more. So then, and it has different editions. So if it comes out with different editions of some of the books, they'll be there. It's so user friendly. You just click on it, and there it is. And you can click on the different pages and turn the page in the upper right hand corner to the left or to the right. And you can probably zoom in or zoom out when you're reading it and scroll down. And if you decide you want to take your students to the library, maybe you want to create a list of skills that you want them to learn at the library, maybe you can have the library and create a list of skills and give them a, a certificate of completion to throw in your portfolio or binder when they complete it. And this is ck12.org and it's very user friendly. And if you're giving them a free period during the day to pick the subject they want to learn about, and maybe this one has some things because it has photography and it has world history. It has so many different subjects and it's just so easy to use that you might just absolutely love it. And this one is underthehome.org and it has different things for different grades. And you can see like if you click on Mother Goose and I'll go to lesson one, you can see how you can see the words on the right I mean on the left and the video on the right. So it's it's a lot of fun. And this one is one of my favorites and it is Mr. Nussbaum. So if you're giving them a free period and you're letting them choose things they want to learn about during that free period, this one has so much. So you can go and you can see all the different things that it has. It has holidays and language arts and math. It has so much. Maybe they want to learn about donuts and you want to make donuts at home and you can use canned biscuits to make donuts and powdered sugar with just a tiny dab of milk or water and it gets watery easy. Maybe you want to learn about ice cream and then you want to have ice cream sundaes at home or you want to learn about popcorn and they need popcorn. Maybe you want to learn about pizza and then make homemade pizzas. This is just some great ideas. So maybe they want to learn about a different subject and they want to do an arts and crafts or they want to draw a picture or write a paper on it. You know, it's just fun, creative things for your students so that they enjoy learning. And I just think this is just an excellent website to use for those sorts of things because you need options. If you're giving them options to learn about different things, sometimes you need to be able to find options for different things that they want to learn about. Maybe you took them to the zoo and they want to learn about some of the different animals that were at the zoo and do more research on it. And this might be a great place to learn those things. So anyway, I just wanted to mention this website because I love this website and maybe you want to add it. And this is Hippocampus, and it's for middle school students to college, and you can see the subjects on the left-hand side. Another one for older students is purplemath.com. I think it's fifth grade all the way up through college because I used to in college. I can't click on it on, on here because it there's so many ads that it makes my voice break up. But it has where you can click on the activities, and you can get the typed up instructions and videos for your students. So if they need that video to learn math, it's just an excellent resource. And this one's at home and it's got 
6th, 7th, and 8th grade. So it, it covers a variety of subjects. So you can check this one out and see if you like this one as well. Uh, this one I love. This one it does say it's from the UK, but it has all these workbooks. And if you have a way of printing out the workbooks, it is it has a lot of them. So you don't have to go buy the workbooks, but you do have to pay to print them out maybe. But you could see what they have and maybe you could print them out for cheap at a, a local place. And another thing if you're homeschooling is you might want to join a homeschool support group. Some are free, some cost money. Some of them offer different things. Some of them have knowledge because they've homeschooled for years, so they might have great ideas. Some of them might go out and do field trips together that might be fun for you and your family. Maybe they have outings at the park or they go do things together at the YMCA. So you can check it out and see if there's one that you're interested in. Maybe you want to donate books after you're done to other families and maybe this is a great way to find other families to donate that books to and i wanted to mention if you're creating a portfolio or a binder some of the things you might want to put in there is the assessment or placement test at, that you give them at the beginning of the year that's not the standardized test to see what level they're on and so you can create a plan of, of your school year. Uh, state home school laws with a date on it, copies of any forms filed and proof of that, a couple calendars or for um, attendance records, brainstorming your favorite resources, an actual list of resources you're going to use, the list of field trips you might take, uh, print out contents from web pages like IXL and workbooks to show your curriculum and list of activities, sample student work, and you can decide if you want to showcase their best work, show progressive work, or show a variety of skills. And progressive work might be um, an outline for an essay and then writing the essay or a spelling quiz at the beginning of the week each week and a spelling test at the end of the week or maybe they're starting to learn their multiplication tables and you'll give them a quiz on it and give them one later so that might show progressive work there's different ideas uh, proof of any field trips taken whether it's a leaflet or a flyer with a date written on it a photo maybe you can do a video maybe you can have them write a paper draw a picture and put the field trip that they took that it's related to and the date um, a weekly schedule you might want to create a weekly schedule so if you put that in your binder or portfolio um, the daily log of activities uh, if they self-evaluate and they tell you how they're doing where they're struggling um, if they need more time on certain subjects you might want to put those in there if you do assessments on them maybe you write an assessment every now and then or every six to eight weeks you write an assessment and at the end of the year in each subject every six to eight weeks and at the end of the year make sure you put a positive spin if they're behind on their reading make sure you put they're behind on the reading but they have a positive attitude or something like that and at the end of the year you could say they were behind on their reading but they went up five reading levels because they had a positive attitude and they worked hard and that will help them take pride in their work if you give them standardized tests yearly you want to put proof of that what their scores are probably in your portfolio or binder if they do volunteer work maybe you could create certificates or some kind of paperwork and have people fill that out and put that in your portfolio or your binder especially if they're going to college or joining the military if they're taking classes outside of the home whether it's yoga swimming lessons piano lessons anything you might want to get paperwork for that and put that in their portfolio or binder your contacts with emails phone number addresses for the school and homeschool support groups if you're doing career study field trips you might want to have them create questions about the education that people needed and the daily activities or the type of skills they needed and if they have to maintain schedules or they have to show leadership or team solving things like that so you can see if you can record audio or video footage and maybe you could see if you can't tour a local hospital to talk to different people in different areas of work positions to see the education and things they needed or a local hotel or maybe you could get ideas from a local chamber of commerce and then you could put the paperwork from your students filling that out in there and maybe this will help them be able to understand the education they need for different types of careers or help them choose a career maybe it will help them just with interviews or their communication skills and there's just some ideas to put in your portfolio or your binder if you're keeping one 
So anyway, I try to cover as much as possible. There's no way to put all the websites. There's so many great websites that have different curriculum that help homeschoolers. And there's so much information, it's hard to get it all into one video. So I hope that this helps someone. And I'm a small YouTube channel, so I do appreciate my viewers. And I thank you so much for watching this video. And please feel free to leave comments or suggestions. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.